This video is designed to talk you through the Mississippi case study and give you a good understanding of the story behind the case study. You should then follow this video up by looking at your ebook uh, and the Quizlet resources to get uh, fact figure places and the point explain expand notes that go with this case study. First of all, in terms of the location, you can see here that uh, the Mississippi is clearly uh, an American river. Um, it drains a large part of the United States, uh, flowing from the north all the way to the south uh, with its mouth uh, feeding out into the Gulf of Mexico. This case study is focused on evaluating the hard engineering and soft engineering strategies used to control this river as it passes through America. The first hard engineering strategy that we're going to talk about relates to levees. Now we know from the work that we've already done on rivers that levees uh, are naturally occurring features that you can see here uh, running alongside the river. Um, levees are caused uh, by the flooding of the river depositing the largest material either side of the river channel. These are hard engineering strategies because they are enhanced or modified by man. So basically in this example, uh, humans would have used machinery like diggers to raise uh, the banks of these uh, levees to an increased height. The higher height of the levees then allows the river to hold uh, a higher capacity of water, therefore reducing uh, the risk of flooding. Here's another picture uh, of uh, a levee which has been raised artificially. And in this example, uh, there's a flood threat warning for the next uh, couple of days. And you can see that uh, the government have raised them even further by installing uh, this line of sandbags and tarpaulin uh, onto the levee to increase its capacity even further. Another example of how they work, um, you can see this here is probably um, some sort of uh, army division in America. And they're using these uh, people to... Uh, reinforce the levees. This final picture um, also shows you uh, the relative size um, of the levees and you can see here that they're actively reinforcing them with this material into these bags uh, probably to alleviate some sort of flood, flood risk. So in your notes where it talks about levees that gives you a clearer understanding of how they work uh, and what they look like in real life. Next strategy uh, relates to uh, relating to the Mississippi relates to river straightening. Again, hard engineering strategy. Simple diagram here. So the idea is that we have a river which meanders like the Mississippi does. Um, humans then straighten the river channel um, through a variety of methods. Normally, um, they excavate a new channel uh, and that new channel is typically concreted or using some other sort of structures to make sure that that new channel stays in place. The thinking behind it is that it shortens the distance and speeds the water flow through this area. Therefore, it lowers the risk of flooding in this area. However, it does typically cause problems further downstream as more water arrives further downstream uh, at a greater speed. Here's an aerial shot um, of the Mississippi itself. So the Mississippi is, is well renowned for the extent of its meandering uh, course, which you can see all the way through this, this image. And here you can see below, uh, it's a, an aerial shot again, probably from Google Maps. Um, you can see some of the old meanders here and here. And you can see that this river has been straightened uh, to flow much quicker through this area, therefore reducing flooding in the surrounding areas. Next hard engineering strategy is the construction of dams. Uh, there are a large number of dams throughout the, the length of the, the Mississippi and also tributaries that feed into the Mississippi. The key idea behind the dams is that they control flow. They give the government the opportunity to control flow. So in the summer, when there's lower amounts of precipitation, the government can release more water from the dams, um, and that allows them then, when winter comes and there's higher levels of precipitation, that they have a storage facility to reduce the flow and reduce the chances of flooding. Another example uh, of a smaller dam, again used throughout uh, the Mississippi, and this map uh, is of one small section in the upper course, and you can see at this stage it includes dams uh, and locks, so areas where they can control the flow all the way along the Mississippi. So I think here we have 27 uh, either dams or locks, um, and this is for one small section uh, of the upper course. So you can see that it's quite, quite a useful 
opportunity for the government to control the flow of all of these uh, dams to reduce the risk of flooding in these areas. Soft engineering strategy um, is afforestation. Afforestation means the planting of trees. So again, from this aerial shot, you can see uh, in the upper course, particularly of the, of the Mississippi, that they have extensively afforested the area. This does a number of things. Um, increase the levels of interception during times of precipitation. That means that uh, the water takes a longer time to reach the channel and spreads the flow uh, after a storm event over a longer time period, thus uh, reducing the flow of water. This is a particularly effective method of uh, reducing the chances of flooding further downstream um, and it's been used uh, increasingly throughout the UK. However, having said that, um, it does take a long time to become fully effective. Obviously, planting trees can take up to 20, 30 years to become fully effective in terms of uh, increasing the interception rates. Final slide that I'd like to talk about today uh, relates to safe flood zones. Again, these are soft engineering strategies. Um, this diagram really illustrates um, the application of safe flood zones. We've got the Mississippi River flowing here. Um, and this relates to uh, areas on the floodplain. So no building work would be permitted to take place in the, in the area immediately beside the river because that has a high risk of flooding. Um, further away from that we've got pasture for grazing and playing fields. The idea um, behind allowing these to be located nearby the river is that it's perfect uh, ground for both grazing and playing fields. It's flat, it's fertile, the grass will grow well in these areas. If these areas flood, it may cause short-term damage, but overall it doesn't cause uh, massive amounts of destruction. Uh, and uh, when the floodwaters recede, the area returns to its normal state. Next to that, we've got the suggestion that there could be roads and car parks. Again, the car parks would be empty uh, if the river floods onto these. Um, it doesn't cause massive amounts of damage. They can be cleaned up once the floodwaters recede, and they just continue. Further to that, we've got industry and housing. It would be an extreme flood event if they were uh, impacted, so that's why they're so far away from uh, the river in this example.